Back to the grid. Grid, I don't know why I said the grid. The grind, the grit. The grind. And we are going to start with uh, public safety. We have our police chief up here to kick us off here. Welcome back. Just waiting for the uh, oh. slides to pop up here. There go. Okay. Um, so just looking at this first slide, uh, the department manages five separate public safety operating budgets, which collectively accounts for approximately 6.5 million. Uh, and it proposed increase this year of 232, or I'm sorry, 262,000. Uh, the five separate budgets are broken down in the slide before you uh, with those proposed changes. The, you can keep it there, Tom. Um, the proposed operating budgets provide for the maintenance of our services and technology at the current levels. These services include, uh, as you all are aware of, response to emergencies and non-emergencies for medical needs such as injuries and illnesses, car crashes, domestic disturbances, hazards, and many types of crimes and investigations. These services also include traffic safety efforts, assessment of traffic-related conditions, building and residential safety, crime prevention, education, and a host of other quality of life services. Uh, they are provided through the collective efforts of the police officers, dispatchers, animal control officers, and our administrative perso personnel. And in addition, our duties are supported by practically all town departments uh, and the fire and ambulance services, and we would like to thank all of them for their support. Uh, the operating budgets include an annual state mandate for wellness uh, for officers, drug screening and training, expenses relating to hiring, professional development, and the day-to-day -day operations. Included in this budget is an annual maintenance for the town-wide public safety radio system. It's down there under emergency management. Um, that serves the police department, public works, ambulance service, public schools, and transportation systems. The reason for the 33% increase there is because we are going into the first year where we have to pay maintenance for that service now. Next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, and as usual, the wage increases due to contractual steps and GWI are responsible for the majority of increases uh, throughout the operating budgets that have salary line items. Uh, you can keep it there, Tom. Nope, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, thank you. My, my bad. Uh, so when we create our proposed budgets, we look through each line item and project our needs and costs. Uh, every year we adjust where we can, and we were again able to reduce some line items this year. With the exception of salaries, overtime, uh, and vehicles, we reduced the operations budget by about $17,000. Um, our holiday pay item, or line item there, uh, sworn officers have an option of taking vacation time in lieu of getting paid for holidays. So in the past, we budgeted the equivalent amount that we would need if everybody um, was paid for their holidays. Uh, a few years ago, we started reducing that based on what the officers are actually taking. Uh, they have the option of taking holidays instead of getting paid, and we're slowly getting that down to a much more accurate number. This current year that we're in, we projected for 85% and now we're down to 82%. Uh, so there's a slight reduction there. And then uh, gasoline, which we're hoping to get some good news later on from, from Tom on that, but that, that showed a $18,900 increase in the cost of fuel due to market conditions. Can you go back to the holiday? So yeah. what am I missing? It's up 8,600. Right, so, so it's up because we had new people join and it's based on salaries. Okay. So when we projected it, so if we, if we looked at what we needed exactly, if everybody took holiday pay, it's, and it's based on their overtime, right? So that's the two so rates. So many different overtime rates because of, of yeah. ranks and steps and all that. Yep. That we would be somewhere around, um, I think it was 217, 218,000 or so. Okay. And we look at, you know, year to year, what people choose, and sometimes they mix it up. Like they'll take some for some holiday for pay, and they'll take some for time off. Yep. And we're getting it down. So, uh, one year they were like sixty-seven percent of the time was that. So, um, it ends up being about a seventeen thousand dollar 
reduction in what we would be budgeting for. So, but help me recognize that, rec reconcile that with we're estimating the year end to be 140. So, Amy, why is why is the estimate of 140 in the light item when? I mean, there's just the, the, this, that's this the actual year? spend, right? So the budget was 194. The actual spend is 140. So we're 54 below the budget mm -hmm. number in the current fiscal year. Yeah. And that estimate is year end estimate, right? But the 22 actual was 130. Say that again. Okay. So either way, so we're projecting the year end estimates can be 140, but the the year end 24 is going to be 80 thousand above. The current year. It seems like the math's wrong somewhere. Yeah, yeah, hold on, I'll. Uh... I get the story of of the overarching, but how it's tying together and the actual proposal sure. isn't working for me. Yeah. So what number, Sean? If you look at the holiday oh, pay I mean, line item, you're looking across. You see, it's 194 is what we bought. We're in the current budget year, right? But we're only going to we're only going to spend 140 based yeah. on the estimate. Yep. yep. And now we're going up to a budget of 203. Why are we not? Are we so we're going up from the 194, yep. and we're not looking at the 140, which is the actual baseline. spend. Yeah, yeah. Right. The 140 right. is your baseline. Right. right. So, <clears throat> right, and and so it varies each year. So we end up, we'll look at the end of the year and see where we are, whether we were at 60 percent expenditure, 70 percent expenditure, whatever it may be, and that's how we reduce it then for the for the next year. But the but the number keeps going up every year based on steps in GWI. No, I get that, but again, I mean, in prior year, our actual was 130. Right. We're, ex we're estimating an actual of 140, so yeah. why are we not budgeting 150? 150, yeah. Well, we could, but that would be closer to... Actual. 65, yeah, 65. And this has been a, a, okay. slow, a slow change over the years. Yep. Like I said, we used to budget for 100% in case yeah, anybody yeah, no, said, okay. you know, we're going to do this. And then we just started seeing, well, consistently it's much less than 100%, so we started going down, and last year, or this current year, we're at 85% of what we would actually need, Fair and now gotcha. we're projecting 82. Uh, we certainly could go lower than that. Yeah, so Amy, can we just put that on the list for this afternoon? Again, I'm not trying to cut actual services, but if, if we're gonna come in at 150 or 160, I mean, yeah, again, I understand not, there's a risk, yeah, right? No, and, but, and, yeah. it's not, and it's not yeah. a service, it's a, it's a contractual obligation, and we may, we may come in like we have done yeah. much, much more. Have you ever that. come in over? Uh, not in the last 10 years. What's your sort of average over the last 10 years? Is there enough percentage? Does that tend to be it? I don't, I don't know. I can, I can get that to you, but I, I don't know right now what that is. Okay. I know that we have gone, uh, we were at one point in the 80%, and then we've been as low as I think 60%. I'm not trying to play with fire where we haven't where we we yeah you know, we under budget, but at the same time, it seems like we might be able to save a few bucks there. Uh, so next slide. Sorry, thanks for indulging me. No, no, it's okay. Uh, so at this point, I will I will turn the CNR projects over to Deputy Chief Chris Davis. Seventy grand. Okay. <clears throat> In this budget request, we've identified uh, several CNR projects that we're requesting funding for. The first being the purchase of three uh, hybrid police cruisers at a cost of 185,000. Uh, these cruisers will fill in the regular replacement cycle of our cr uh, current cr uh, cruisers. Patrolling and responding to both emergency and routine calls for service is critical and core function of our daily operations. Uh, our cruisers are subjected to much more stress to the mechanics of the vehicle than a normal vehicle with being exposed to emergency driving conditions, multiple drivers, long idle times, and little downtime. The request replacements will save money in repair costs as well as reducing the amount of time our vehicles will be out of service for maintenance, etc. Any issue with repairs on those or increased challenges for our friends at the garage? Did we already do them for the three this past year? So we, we did not, yeah. yes, we have ordered them. Yeah. Uh, we just don't have them we yet. Don't have them yet. So we don't know what the maintenance impact is. Okay. Like you said, the first few years shouldn't be significantly different. The other thing is, are we going to build and charge these 
transportation. No, these are hybrids, right? Yeah, yeah, these charge. We're not buying Teslas. Right. Uh, yeah. I'm making some diagnostic equipment that's okay. associated with it. But the, the new vehicles, like to the Chief's point, it's warranty. Okay. Thanks. Is, were these, I mean, I know it's not uh, an e vehicle. Will this, will this um, technology put a stop to idling or not? So it, it would, yes, the cars would shut off. Uh, through the, using gas while they're idling and just the engine would use just enough to charge the battery So it would just be running on the battery as far as like the lights and everything else until it was actually, you know, driving okay. Unless there were unless it was a prolonged period of time and then it's gonna kick back on. Okay. <coughs> and just a pet peeve of mine was idling yeah. uh, mm -hmm. in the, I, in, so, so they did do they uh, tell you essentially that the uh, to, as a selling perspective that the replacement cycle is is the same as a full as a as a full ice car is right now, they they don't recommend a replacement. Like we're, our replacement schedule is not based on. It's purely your own usage. usage. It's, okay, it's purely your own usage. Okay. It's our own usage. It's what happens to the cars, how we drive okay. them. It's our maintenance concerns after mm -hmm. a certain amount of time. I'm just saying yes, but do we even? Well, we must have some sort of internal forecast of how often. I mean, to get to. To get like Tom's trucks one a year, did it? So you must have your own sort of internal. And does that just does that change that forecasted schedule? Do you think at all? Not at this point. Right. Okay. I mean, I think this is more geared towards the engine, which isn't necessarily, I want to say, a concern as far as like the higher mileage. I think it's more the wear and tear and the brakes, the overall the body and everything else. I think yeah. the, uh, you know, from the driving as opposed to just the engine alone. Um, so I bet they're somewhat new. So you know, it's Wait and it's going to take yeah, it's going to take a little bit of time to see like okay, is there an impact with that or not? How many how many cruisers do we have total? We have uh, twenty four. So it's going to take us a while to get all the way through. So we don't yet know or can really enjoy any of the energy savings either. Okay. Right now it has two hundred to tell it. This and these are explorers. Same cost, give or take. A little bit more. Yeah, a little bit more. Thousand more. But not the whole increase more. That's just all. <coughs> okay. So essentially, the little bit more probably offsets the energy savings. So it's about the same cost either way. Okay. <coughs> all right. Um, we're also looking for two administrative vehicles at a cost of 101430 uh, One of the vehicles would come out of the operating budget, while the other would be paid for from the capital. Uh, these vehicles serve as replacements and follow our established vehicle replacement plan. The administrative vehicles consist of unmarked vehicles assigned to the command staff as well as the detective division. Replacing two of the vehicles in fiscal year 24 will keep our fleet, uh, administrative fleet within sound management program for use, regular use as well as emergency use and, uh, and preparedness. Uh, both of the vehicles that would be replaced are 2014 model years. Those are the Tahoes? No. Uh, no, those would be... Exploders. Okay. Um, the next project we've identified is updating and replacing the technology that's located in our training room. In consultation with our IT department, we've identified the need to update and replace the technology located in our training room, an estimated cost of $10,000. Most of the IT technology that's uh, located in there is approximately 17 years old. We know that that room serves a multitude of uh, uses and functions, including as our training room, our emergency operations center, as well as uh, our daily briefing room. We also have like, our citizens academy there and kind of a de facto community <coughs> room. Um, this upgrade and update will include such items as new commercial grade LED display, uh, tied in with HDMI technology, new audio, and a new projector. The next, any questions on that? The next project we're seeking funding for is the annual maintenance cost of our body worn cameras and in car cameras at a cost of $54,512. Um, that is, so since for the last several years, um, we've had our body worn cameras and in, in dash car cameras <coughs> required by Connecticut law for all. Police, uh, sworn police officers and all uh, marked vehicles that are, can be used in a control function. The money that would be allocated for this uh, represents the annual cost of maintenance, storage, warranty, and licensing for all of the, uh, both the body worn camera and in dash camera systems. 
What's the cost to buy the things every year? Sorry? What was the cost to buy them originally? <laughs> so we jumped out of this plan originally. There was no, there was no upfront. It was there's no. It's just a man. It's a licensing it's fee basically. Yeah, every year, yeah. And there's a okay. plan in there for replacing these. We're coming up on a full gotcha. replacement of these at the two and a half year mark and at the five year mark. But that's included in this. It's included in that. It's included. The storage is included there, uh, and that's a third party storage facility on I, on the cloud yep. with a bunch of redundancy. This is basically the cost of doing business. Okay. Next project uh, we've identified is um, providing funding for our soft body armor replacement for seven officers at seven thousand uh, dollars. Our department provides officers with ballistic vests, uh, which have a five-year expiration period. There are seven officers that are due will be due for the ballistic vest replacement in fiscal year 24. Uh, just kind of going forward, we also have two officers in 25, 22 officers in fiscal year 26. Uh, it goes on from there. Uh, the cost of funding the purchase in fiscal year 24 is, like I said, $7,000. Uh, the next item is uh, a, taser, a taser replacement. We're looking to replace our current model X2 taser with an updated taser 7 model. Our current tasers were purchased in 2016 and have exceeded the manufacturer's recommended year, uh, lifetime of five years. Since we purchased those units, there's been a substantial amount of improvements and advances in technology, safety, accuracy uh, of the devices. The newest taser model uh, cartridges fly straighter than the current models, also designed to connect better with the target. The battery is of the Taser 7 is also rechargeable, which is an upgrade from our current model, which is not. Uh, this function will allow us to save a considerable amount of money each year in battery expenses. Uh, the newer model Taser also integrates with our body worn cameras so that um, it is act automatically activated when the taser is drawn out of the holster, which is an important function. Nice. Uh, another important function is that when it's, um, it's charging at the end of each shift, it automatically downloads the data logs as well as uh, any available firmware, uh, firmware and updates for it. This eliminates the supervisors from having to continually go in and manually conduct this process, which can be very time consuming. We also realize the savings from purchasing training cartridges, targets, and uh, duty use replacement cartridges, which are all included in the cost. Um, and it comes with a five year warranty. Can you use the old ones for training? No. So, uh, yeah, we'll be trading those in as part of the, okay. the, uh, the uh, purchase. Okay. We won't give you a list of volunteers then. Um, Okay, the next item that we're talking about is the uh, less lethal launcher. We're looking to replace all of our, our current uh, beanbag uh, less lethal shotguns with less lethal launchers. Uh, the current shotguns are over 20 years old and the manufacturer is not producing them anymore as they've gone out of business. Uh, new advances in technology have shown that the 40 millimeter less lethal launcher system increases officer and suspect safety, drastically improves device accuracy, improves device effectiveness uh, and eliminates ammunition confusion which means i mean so right now we're using uh, shotguns that are painted orange that we, that we use a, uh, a sock bean bound uh, bean bag round um, but in all reality it's still a functioning shotgun mm -hmm. so if any shotgun shells or ammunition were loaded into that it would still discharge mm -hmm. whereas this system um, without kind of making it sound too simp simplistic, um, it's kind of like a Nerf gun on steroids. Mm -hmm. so it's, it shoots like a, a foam um, baton, which is, um, you know, it's, it doesn't shoot any lethal rounds, uh, any, any, any firearm ammunition, so there's no, no confusion there. Um, How does it work on bears? It's, yeah, yeah, it that wasn't a joke, I'm serious. Yeah, yeah. No, and that's part of it. I mean, so it yeah. can be, it can, that's one of the other benefits is it can be used to tase bears. Okay. It's much more compact than the uh, current shotgun, so it can be used in, in closer quarters, okay. it can be used at a much closer distance, it can be up, up to five, uh, five feet as opposed to uh, 15 feet with the shotgun. Mm -hmm. So it provides a much more uh, versatility. And the last CNR project that we are seeking funding for is purchasing time and attendance software. Uh, we're looking to purchase the software in order to better and more efficiently manage our multiple and fluctuating schedules across the department. Purchasing the software will provide electronic scheduling, time and attendance data, 
as well as web-based accessibility to employees to view schedules, submit leave requests, as well as opting in for various assignments. They'll reduce paper uh, usage, the need for storage, as well as increasing efficiency by reducing phone calls into our dispatch center and, and department uh, from employees looking to check their schedule assignments. It'll also beneficial, uh, be beneficial to provide the ability to produce, uh, produce various reports on uh, employee use of time. So some of the benefits including saving time and effort, reducing scheduling errors and conflicts, empowering employees to take control of their schedules, increasing the accessibility and mo uh, mobile access, and increasing the visibility and accountability. So we requested $18,000 to fund this project. Is this software unique to police departments or could it be used by other departments here too? So, I mean, there's a multitude of platforms out there that, um, that have this. Uh, there are specific ones to police departments just because, you know, the different schedule, they have, I would say some of the scheduling is somewhat unique, so as well as some of the overtime requests and things like that, that are kind of more industry specific to the police departments. But there are, I mean, you know, I'd be lying if I didn't say that there was, you know, other um, <coughs> you know, companies out there that do for a multitude of we, things. We, we've replaced <coughs> Tom's Scheduling software, we replace Tom's scheduling software. You know, in five years, somebody's going to come in here and say, I got a new system for you. It's going to cover all years. And they're, going to, they're going to replace all the ones he's budgeted for five years in town. Which is That's probably rallied in no matter what we do, though, right? Right. I mean, just with ours, obviously, we said we have so many, we have you know, 24 7 operation with, with, you know, multiple shifts, multiple, um, you know, uh, schedules, as well as overtime. Requests that come in. Uh, this is a group. Does there an imagine this of like an accountability component? To this? Right. There's no question for me. So, just from my previous experience with using this, I mean, it, it makes it great. I mean, as far as you can pull up anybody's schedule and you can see it all mapped out. That you can see like sick time usage, uh, you know, any, any kind of usage of time. We can start seeing patterns. With not when you're just kind of flipping through, maybe on a daily. Basis, you're not seeing a whole snapshot of an employee's picture, um, so it's, it's really beneficial to be able to get, as I said, a more of a holistic approach uh, to time off usage to, to identify potential liabilities, potential patterns, and things like that. So it's it definitely is uh, beneficial. We definitely don't have to like. I, I think we understand the value of it. My question is whether we each department needs its own software or whether there's an opportunity to leverage what we already have and if the answer is no I, under, I understand that but I just wanted to ask the question and I mean from what we've, we can determine right now I mean even the companies that we've contacted I mean it's per the license per, right per, yeah like okay. per license so yeah. I mean yeah. we're whether we're using <coughs> you know X Y and Z company or A B and C company we're probably paying the same but it's gonna be more you know specific to, yeah. to our department mm -hmm. So I don't know if there necessarily would be a savings by kind of say jumping on board with uh, an existing uh, company that's, that's already been utilized. Does that integrate, and you, Wendy just said it quietly, but it, does that integrate with payroll and benefits and everything else? Yeah, uh, some of the ones that we put yeah, do integrate with Munis. Um, so. so we would probably want to pick one that does? It depends because we we have researched some of these so far. We have not chosen the one that we're looking for. Some of them have a very complicated setup fee uh, and setup process mm -hmm. that we have heard is very very cumbersome. If those are the ones that work with Munis, it may not be worth it because they've had years of years of problems. Other ones, uh, two in particular that we're looking at, we know departments around here use those and they've had a lot of success with those. And if they work with Munis, that's, that's great. Yeah, I just think I say, I mean, obviously, the, the officer's pay, payroll is somewhat more complex given how many ways there is to pay, too, contractually. So if, that is, if there is a benefit to execution there, you know, it might be an opportunity. Okay. Before we turn it back to Chief Walter, any other questions on the um, so we So we, re we, re we replaced our sidearms, correct, last year, two years ago? Funded for this year. Yeah. It's, so, in, the, it's in progress. So those are... And we're doing our tasers now. We're doing our non-lethals. Mm How -hmm. many more <coughs> weaponist things do we have? <laughs> that you guys have? <laughs> so, uh, if we want to talk weapons or, or, or tools, uh, you know, we have 
OC spray. These have moved from here to there. Right. We have we have OC spray, which is pepper spray, which uh, that has not changed in 30 to 40 years. I don't expect that to happen, but if a new product comes out that is very different, safer, whatever, then at some point we may be looking at that. Um, you know, we also carry an expandable baton, um, and that has been around probably for 30 some odd years as well. Still a val valuable tool, uh, fortunately is not used that often, which is, which is great, but I don't see any other. I mean, they, they come out with lots of, you know, innovations with webs that go out and, and capture people and things that spin around, but, you know, until those are really solid tools for us, I don't think we should be trying those out. So I don't expect any other, other weaponistic uh, yeah. replacements <laughs> in the... Uh, We're kind of through that. We're through the site. For now. Question. Um, with the introduction of um, retail cannabis in the state, do you anticipate any sort of training costs uh, around that area when it comes to <coughs> testing people under the influence or just anything in the category? I don't know that there'll be an increase uh, in the training costs. I mean, that would be built into, so each, when new officers get hired, they get sent through a DUI training um, and they get, which would be incorporated into that as far as other detection, you know, issues and things like that. Um, as well as our in-service training, which, you know, they, they, there's a multitude of different topics that get brought up um, during our in-service training. So it, it could be just through that. I don't know that there'll be, a, a, it may be a specific, you know, just cannabis training, uh, you know, block that uh, gets put out there. But um, I, I'm envisioning that would probably get rolled into some of our current training that's already in existence. Okay. That would just be kind of a, specialized uh, training with that. Yeah, I mean, I have read about the drug recognition expert training, which seems like it's a pretty involved it's process, intense, yeah. and that is like a different extensive training. I mean, do we have anyone with DRE certification here? No. Does the, I mean, so do our, right our neighboring now, towns, or what can you say about so that? So right now, I, and the number keeps going up, but as of, I'll say a year or two ago, I want to say there's 15 mm -hmm. throughout the state. Um, so there's only a handful, typically region, and the state is trying to obviously increase that number. Um, so they're trying to incentivize, and, 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 but it is very intensive. Uh, you know, they, part of the training is going to Arizona and doing getting specific training out there. Is you know, first one, initial trainings here. Then it's a most it's a multi-step process. Um, so like I said, I mean, there there may be maybe 20 throughout the state right now, but. Um, I think as time goes on, that number is going to grow. But um, to have you know multiple, you know, it's not like we can send to have like our whole department test oh, DREs right, or, right. or even multiple right. at this point. I mean, at some point maybe we'll have one, one or two, you know. But you know, it's just uh, right now it's a, such a highly specialized skill and um, <coughs> pretty intensive. So um, if we needed one, you know, there's an on-call list for that whole. So through the state, so that, and that's part of the when you sign on to be a DRE, the departments um, recognize that other departments will need it. So you basically are, are accepting that you're going to help out other departments at, on an as a mutual aid, mutual aid right. component. <laughs> so so uh, if we needed one, we could call and uh, get one of the one of the third or twenty or whatever <laughs> some another agency. Thank you. Uh, just to comment a little bit about a couple of those things. We, you know, I suspect uh, because the state did this move with uh, detecting DWI uh, that they may mandate at some point down the line once they develop a program that every officer go to a four hour training, an eight hour training, mm -hmm. you know, once in their career. So we may see some sort of requirement at that point which would then cause us to you know, send officers out for, for training. Um, but in the big scheme of things, probably minimal impact on our on our training schedule, but an additional now requirement for us. Uh, and the DRE program, like uh, the, the Deputy Chief said, is, is quite an intense program, but also 
almost all of that is geared towards after the arrest has been made. And you really need a, a, almost a fully compliant arrestee in order to make good use of that DRE uh, analysis. So one of the difficult things is detecting out on the street. Because you're not going to hold somebody, you're not going to call a DRE unless you happen to have someone on your shift working to maybe help you through that process. But with so few throughout the state, and the program really designed for, you know, almost completely after the arrest, um, it will be few and farther. You had an eyebrow go up on the uh, administrative replacement schedule. Oh, no. So you asked about the replacement schedule for the patrol cars for the yeah. for the admin ones. We we do have one. We have so had one. I see you have one. You see. You guys for the admin cars, yeah. So those, yeah, so those don't stick around for three years. Those stick around for it's a six-year plan, mm -hmm. but we You're have what out. But we have cars on that there that are eight years old, oh, that are nine years old. We're trying to stick to the six-year plan, but that's a little difficult. Um, the, let's see, Chief. I'm sorry. Can, can we just go? Just a question back on the the original. So just on the staffing overall, because you're going to talk about service improvements, which is staffing too, right? So where are we at? How many sworn officers right now? So right now we are authorized 41, and we have we have 39. Okay. Okay. So that's where so that's where we're the estimate of, of 4.2 spend for the year on the budget of 4.3, and then obviously we're budgeting off the total approved 41, right on the full salaries, full full scale, a whole nine yards, right? Yes. Okay. Um, how long have those positions been open? So we were uh, we were allowed to hire two more from 39 to 41 last June. Um, last sorry, last July one. Mm -hmm. We were able to fill one in September, okay. and that was one of our current dispatchers that created a dispatch open, which okay. we still have. Okay. Um, and then we had the second, and, and that that officer is still in the police academy right now, okay. and he'll be getting out in April, and then he'll have his five months or so um, training with another officer here. We still have that second, that 41, mm -hmm. um, is is still open, and we've gone through the process for months and months now trying to find somebody. Okay. Um, we had an officer uh, resign in February, okay. so now we have a second spot. So we're back to 39, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. All right, that, that, that helps. So you think that by the end of the calendar year, is it safe to say, end of calendar 2023, you're going to be at 40, back to 40? Yeah. I think we will be at 40, okay. possibly 41, cool. but not, but not usable. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. But we got to pay them, right? So that's the important piece. Yeah. Once, yeah. Yes. So once they're in the door, we're paying them. Yeah. Okay. Now, just a quick cl clarification question: under emergency management and your expenditures, yes. tech and program supplies, um, <coughs> it has estimated for this year 7300 but it's a request of 25,000 and it says first full year of radio system maintenance contract so is this an increase that will be annual annual now or is it just a one off increase it, it will be an increase not that much and i have this i have the schedule here so with that contract for the townwide public safety radio system mm -hmm. So year year two, which is where, where we're in, um, will be uh, roughly seventeen thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and then the next year after that will be thirty five thousand, and then the next year after that will be about thirty six thousand, and then thirty seven, and then thirty eight, and then that's all we have projected out from the uh, the vendor on that. <coughs> But as the equipment obviously starts to get used and uh, gets older, then the cost is more to warranty and service that. Okay, thanks. It's cheap. Yeah. I, I think I asked this the other day and I can't remember the answer. Do we have an animal control officer yet? Or we have yes. somebody coming yes. on board or they did, right? No, so we, we had we one. We hired somebody. They, yes. they yeah. left. Yep. Yeah, so we hired somebody in September, October. And then they, right. they left a short time later. Right. We are hopefully in the very final stages okay, that's what I'm of the hiring process, and we will hope to find out Monday night. Okay, that's nice. I knew I just last one didn't like bears, huh? That. I'll, I'll say the last one was was fantastic. Uh, just once 
she got in there, she realized there was something else that she really wanted to pursue a little bit stronger than this. So the Bears Beach of is around. They are out. Yes. <laughs> yeah. They yeah, don't really go in. We got the new launcher. <laughs> They're on Lisa's deck, right? Please, weren't they on your deck last week? The what? The bears? Oh, they were. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we get a big one. I get all my news from Facebook. <laughs> those, are, those are big paw prints. I was like, wow. Oh, that's gorgeous. Okay, okay to go on to uh, service and bourbons? Yeah. Sure. Sorry, Chief. I just wanted to. No, no, it's okay. We were going to get to that question one way or another within the Zerbin Group, so I figured we'd go there first. And I think I have a little bit of more information also to tie onto that. Yep. All right. So, uh, service improvements. Uh, each of you have been on the board for my presentations and requests uh, for additional employees over the years, and we've made some small steps to get there. Um, I still think we need more employees. Um, I, won't, I won't repeat all that you know, we have discussed in the past. <laughs> but I would like to make a few points uh, that are, are contemporary. So you funded, as you spoke of earlier, a staffing study this year to provide a third-party analysis into our staffing needs. Uh, we selected CERTUS as that, that study group. And although the report is not complete, I do have some draft recommendations from them. For our patrol function, they recommend staffing shifts with a total of 29 sworn officers. We have been staffing with 27 officers. Uh, they recommend keeping all the assignments that we have uh, outside of the patrol, the patrol division and fill in the assignments outside that have not been filled. So, for instance, we have not been able to fill uh, the third detective uh, position for quite some time now because we have not had bodies to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, to meet these recommendations, uh, we need to add three sworn officers, and they also recommend adding two full time civilian positions to the records division and one full-time civilian to the Training and Community Services Division for a total of three additional civilians. So that's a total recommendation from CERTUS with, uh, I'm sorry, of three sworn and three civilian. So those recommendations from CERTUS are based on the current workloads uh, they are not based on anticipated or eligible normal retirements uh, based on years of service. And we have several of those uh, that are potential this coming year. Uh, the recommendations are not based on a complete look at uh, sick time, injury time, vacation time, funeral leave, uh, or our training needs. They are not based on a problem solving and community policing philosophy of service. Uh, this type of policing requires more time, availability, and involvement in the community. Uh, the recommendations are not based on recruitment and retention issues uh, that we see in policing, which are far from favorable and, and have been for quite some time now. Um, we have yet to be able to fill those two, two sworn vacancies. Uh, these recommendations are not based on the existing and projected growth in our community, such as Barber Cove, the Hartford South, Dorset Crossing, just to name a few. And finally, the, the recommendations are not based on a very evident and significant workforce change over the last few years. There's a very different desired balance between work and personal time. Much of the workforce now values that off time much more than they value being able to work overtime. Um, the work-life balance has changed significantly and we are definitely experiencing it within the police department. Uh, it may be a healthier lifestyle, and we need to adjust because it impacts our retention abilities, the morale, and ultimately workplace performance. So to address the need, we're asking for three sworn officers and the funding to promote an existing officer to sergeant. The three officers will allow us to eventually meet the needs in patrol that we in service recognize in order to maintain our current service level. Questions about that before? Yeah, I have a question. The promotion. Yeah. Um, so, under additional sergeant, it has, I brought my glasses, 153. Is that the that's increase? A, or? That's the cost of an additional officer and then the difference between an officer's pay and a sergeant's pay. So, it's all <coughs> one line. Okay, thank you. What am I, if I just, 
quite possible. I don't understand. Um, the chart, the your, the FTE chart. Yep. Uh, it's the same year over year. Budgeted proposed. Fifty-three, fifty-six point three. Mm -hmm. Okay. What am I missing? Not this in the is chart. a service improvement request, so it's not on. Not on the chart. Okay. Page three. Okay. So add, okay. add, so add three to the bottom. Add of this three point. to the chart. Right. Right. Yeah. It's it, it, three, four, and, and three equals five. That's six. That's six, yeah. Three civilians. Six people. Uh, can we go to the next slide, please? Yes, yep. So within that, I mean, I know it's not a fully baked report, but no schedule changes, no structural changes, no, or is that still pending? It, it's still pending. Uh, there were some there were some recommendations to take a look at a 12-hour shift, sure. and uh, we did have conversations about that, and we certainly can look at that, but there are a lot of uh, hurdles to get over with that, right. uh, not just contractual hurdles, but, you know, the way that our shifts are set up now is if there happens to be a last-minute uh, sick leave requests, the, the one shift is responsible for the next shift. And if you're working a 12-hour shift and you're the only sergeant, you cannot stay for that hours. next shift. Yeah. So yeah. there's a lot of a lot of difficulties. Not that. necessarily a solution for a smaller department like ours. No. Yeah. I think it, when you go to a much larger and you don't have a big concern about minimum staffing like we do, when maybe a larger place may be able to flex 50% you know, of their, their schedule, which, which we cannot. Is minimum staffing contractually negotiated? It is. It is. And that study that's not, the study that is not a study yet, it's not finished, uh, it doesn't, if as best as you know, yeah. nothing's in there about better, faster, less at all. It's all about keep doing an ad. There's nothing in there about savings of any type. Uh, savings, no. About doing better, yes. Like one of their recommendations is not to pull a patrol officer in to do fingerprints, but we have nobody inside to do fingerprints. Uh, and so they would much rather, which we share that same philosophy, would much rather have that officer out there. So there are recommendations for, for being able to do things better, but there were no recommendations, and correct me if I'm wrong, I, I, don't, I don't recommend, I mean, I don't remember any, any savings in there. Okay. But it is in draft form. Uh, so just to kind of give you an idea of some of our staffing issues, uh, over the last two years we are significantly above the last six-year average in use of leave, and that's sick or injury leave, vacation, compensatory time, vacation, sorry, as well as other overtime hours. And as you can see on there, we just kind of uh, plotted that out there or um, on what the total hours were annually or total days. And then I just took the, the average of 2022 and 2021 calendar year. Um, that's over there towards the end. So you can see we're on, a, on an increase there. Uh, the numbers are, are fairly small, so that 94%, obviously it's just a number, and we went from 64 as an average to 124 in two years. We've had some significant um, sicknesses and injury um, over the last few years. Is that, is that comp, like work comp time, or is that? The injured is. So we didn't we have a prolonged comp in the earlier years? I'm surprised that number was so low, given the accident that we had. That was 2013. Oh, so that's off? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's only Getting my years messed up. All right, you remember what I'm talking about. Yeah, all right, that was yeah. longer than I can remember. Okay. That was well, you remembered it. Yeah. It's like, wait a minute. I was like, I know that. Okay. So just another number to give you. Since November 2022, we have been out 20 to 30 percent of our of our patrol workforce. So that number of 27 that 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 we try to staff our patrol with, we've been out 20 to 30 percent of that. So it's about five to eight officers since November. We we have not had access to, whether it's because of sick, injured. Um, or um, like an extended sick, we now have a category for that, which I'll, which I'll show you in a little bit, or it was a vacant position, we have not been able to fill it. Um, so this doesn't include vac uh, vacation time, you know, a day here and a day there, or a week's vacation, it doesn't include a normal sick leave, where somebody is sick for a day or two days, it doesn't include that, or any training replacements. Uh, we expect to be in the same range for a minimum of several more months. 
Um, that time could be longer or the number could be greater depending on sick, injury recovery times, um, retirements, or any other additional reasons for extended leave. It can only get better by maintaining the health of our existing available workforce and by filling some of those vacancies. Um, the major long-term solution is to increase the number of our workforce. And again, getting back to the study, anything about what the right numbers from that ought to be? Like, from a recommendation? Like, what, we, what if, if we're fully staffed, what do we expect in that space? Is that part of what's in the study? Yeah, so, so, so it, it, was, it was to put 29 in patrol right. and then to fill all the other vacancies throughout the organization. But then it does what to this? Did they give you that? No. No, yeah. they, didn't, they didn't do this. So that would be, I don't know how that's done, right? But like, so we go up in staff, what does it mean for this chart, right? As, I don't know if we can, we can figure that out. Because there's always going to be overtime, right? It's the nature of the profession, it's the nature of the job. Yeah. But then, there, I mean, does it cut in half? Is it only down by 10%? No, no. Yeah, and, and I think that's very difficult to say because I can tell you over 22 and 21, most of that overtime is vacation use, that type of leave, sick or injured leave. So the vacation turns into overtime because when somebody's taking vacation, replace. someone else is doubled up, right? Yeah. So and just to get it to the minimum. Yeah. Uh, but in other years, like 2014, a lot of that overtime was because of investigations. Right. So it, it does vary, and yes, over the course of time, you can come up with, you know, with an idea, and that's. That's sort of what this is. If we were to add two officers, I would hope to see some difference. And, and but it's not and, material, though, right? Well, further further on, I'll show you how I think it is with that sergeant's position. But the real answer is, I mean, you change the minimums, and that's that's what could drive overtime down. Yes. Okay. How likely is that? Uh, not likely because those minimums are really low. <coughs> right now, the minimum is three, three and a supervisor. So on 29 sworn officers, how? that's where I get confused. Yeah. Three is the minimum. So how do you hit OT so fast if you have 26 other officers? So that's why we had five to eight out between so those So it's the three shifts, so nine a day, okay. You yeah. change the shift makeup. You're changing the shift makeup. Yeah, and the, and the shift makeup is, is not always the same either. So with 27, we don't have nine, nine, and nine. Right. We, we, have, it, we have it varied. There are more on, on days, that's where our heavier numbers are. Um, there's a little bit less usually on evenings and then definitely a lot less on the midnight shift. Right. Um, and then, depending on who was out on those shifts for any extended amount of time, we will then adjust that. So this is, we can probably take this offline, but if you have minimum of, of three, but you schedule nine for the day shift, can you start scheduling seven and then call in two more? And then you're, you're eliminating the OT because now they're not scheduled anymore. You're hitting the minimums, but you're not scheduling nine, you're scheduling seven. But you're calling them in? Okay, or you're... That's overtime, right? But for the next, usually, you, I, I don't know, I guess it's a harder conversation, right? So they're not, you're not scheduling nine, therefore you're shifting them to the next shift. No, that doesn't work either. I can show you an Excel sheet. we got to look at the whole it, schedule. It, it, very, yeah. it nicely shows, like, how all the gaps are filled. So I'll j just for a, a real quick... All I'm saying is if you don't use them all up in all three shifts, then you have more in reserve. That's not OT because they're just not scheduled. Therefore, they're not hitting the OT time. Right? They're only scheduled for 20, and then they're on reserve for another 20. That's not. Is that still OT? Because you're not scheduling them for a full 40 for the week. What does on reserve mean? You're not scheduling them for 40. You're holding them back for fill-in versus OT. Because if you schedule everybody are fully, gonna, then everybody's OT. Are they going to work? If they're, well, there's always OT, so yes. But they just don't get paid OT. Now they get paid regular. Because it's not OT. They're under 40 hours. Yeah. Flex schedule. Yeah. yeah. I don't think that'll work with our business. <laughs> I mean, but that's the. Definitely worth trying to understand that, but I don't, I don't think that. You see what I'm saying, though, right? Because. I see what you're saying, but. It's different. Yeah. I know it's different. It'd be a contractual issue that a certain portion of the. Have, uh, the, the officers would have to have a flex schedule. Exactly. And I mean, again, but that also caters to the work-life balance, right? Potentially. Right. You don't want to work, you don't want to work a full week. I mean, places are going to four-day work weeks. I mean, there's a lot of changes. I don't know. 
something to talk about in the future. We don't need to bog it down anymore today. Sorry. Chief, one thing you said, I think you said before, let's just say there was a new officer hired with that re and, and a need for a sergeant. Would that result in an internal person being promoted to sergeant? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So back again, sorry, uh, three officers and how many yet? Nine or three, more? Three so civilians. Three and three. Yeah. Is, is, what, is what service is recommending, that's not what our service improvement request is. Right. Yeah. But we could add those incrementally to add to, if we were to say that. Yeah, and if I was to you know, really yeah. prioritize, yeah. we can try to make some, some things work if we had those sworn. But yeah. I, I think ideally in, in uh, services recommendation, yes, three and three. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so yeah, there we go. Um, so we have a very small pool of sergeants to choose from to fill supervisory requirements on, on all three shifts, seven days a week, all year long. So we currently have eight sergeant positions. Six of those are assigned to patrols. So we have two for each shift. And then we have two other sergeants. One supervises the detective division and one supervises uh, training in community services. For the last year and a half, and we've gone through this throughout the years, we have not been able to fill that detective sergeant position. We just have not had enough bodies to do that. So that has been taken on by the one of the lieutenants for the last year and a half. Uh, we finally just filled that in February with a detective sergeant, uh, but effective this Tuesday, is it the deputy chief? Tuesday, the detective sergeant? Yes. Uh, will be removed from that assignment and back on patrol because our, our leave is, is so significant. So we will not be able to hold that position for right now and, and hopes that people will be able to get back to work, be able to fill some spots and and, uh, and get that person back in there. Uh, but with this, this such a small pool, it um, becomes very challenging when we provide training, professional development, and during use of, of leave yeah, time. Um, we looked at the supervisor patrol shift vacancies over the last months. So uh, eight months, so from July to February, which is up there. Um, those are the supervisor patrol shift vacancies. So the total hours between uh, July 1 and the end of February was 1,603. So, it's, so that's 180 patrol shifts that we had to fill since July. And if every patrol sergeant was to take that compensation for pay, it would have been $117,000. And keep in mind, our overtime budget is 275000 So we looked at the same time frame the year before, so July 1, 2021 through uh, February 2022. And again, an even higher number, 1,603 hours or 200 shifts, uh, and it came out to 126000 So we're not spending all of that uh, necessarily because the sergeants have the ability to take some of that overtime for compensatory time, and that may or may not create uh, a monetary liability uh, when they decide to take that off. Um, but that's a that's a those are big numbers. So uh, that's potentially 64% of our budgeted uh, overtime. So. Uh, the service improvement request asks for an additional uh, roughly 17000 to pr promote an existing officer to sergeant. So we would create another one. Um, can go forward? Yep. So with that additional sergeant position, um, we would look to make use of that new position to increase the pool of sergeants, to reduce the amount of supervisor overtime shifts. And we did a, a very brief uh, trial and error several years ago where we assigned three sergeants to the, uh, the day shift. And so when a sergeant was out at training or not available to work, we had one working. And then if that one was out, we then had another sergeant. So it actually saved us quite a bit in the amount of supervisor overtime shifts. Not looking to do that again. I'm looking to do a, a different type of, of a sort of a hybrid situation. I have to work out with uh, with the union on, but looking at greater supervision on the evening shift when you don't have the administrative hours, looking at greater supervision and providing greater support to the dispatch center, um, 
So I'm looking for a sergeant, another sergeant on that evening shift, and kind of a hybrid where they can conduct a lot of and handle a lot of the interior activities when people come in and they're either looking for something, they want to file a complaint, um, whatever it may be, or to monitor our prisoners. Um, so to have that available on that evening shift, it's almost like a desk sergeant that you see in a lot of other places. And at the same time, if an evening shift supervisor spot opens up, that person can slide over. It's part of their position and it's not overtime. So it'll add to the pool of, of, um, of sergeants. Hopefully it will reduce some some overtime significantly, provide a lot of extra support to the dispatch center where they can actually jump in and help out um, when things get a little crazy in there. And then finally to distribute some of the supervisor and administrative functions that can be done by a supervisor. Back to the regular slides if you don't mind. So the, the final slide here is on uh, the records, clerk, service improvements. Um, and as I had mentioned, the draft from CERTIS calls for two additional full-time clerks in the records division. That division uh, doesn't just physically manage all of our records, but they are an integral part of our quality assurance um, on our paperwork and on a lot of our processes. Um, they do. They do a lot of our crimes analysis for us. They collect that data for us. Uh, they manage property and evidence, and you would not believe how much property comes in to us, things that are found, um, evidence that, that we may seize that's turned into us. They manage all that. The division has, a uh, has seen a steady and at times abrupt increase in workload over the years. And the, for instance, is when the pistol permit applications uh, skyrocketed and went from uh, you know two, digit, two digits around 60 or so a year to uh, 360 in a year and they're slowly starting to come down uh, but in 2021 I'm sorry 22 I think we did 250 of those. Um, in 2021 the records division reviewed 13 percent more incidents than the year before uh, they did a, a very thorough in-house workload assessment of their work in 2022 for the 2021 workload. And basically the, the division showed that they were needed at least one more person to get the actual work that they've completed done. And we were able to get a little bit of overtime in there uh, because we had to. We have uh, time, time frames on a lot of things. We have time frames on FOI requests and we have time frames by statute on pistol permits. Um, so we are asking um, not necessarily what the service report is looking for, of uh, two full-time in there. What we would like to do is add a full-time right now and then increase the hours of our current part-time staff. Uh, and that's in the actual service approval. And that's all I have okay. for you. Uh, so I have a question on that. Um, so we have a couple other places where people are asking for hours extensions of current staff. Um, I think George McGregor is looking to expand the deputy building inspector. Um, Tom's looking to expand Kate, Kate Rin's role. Um, how much impact would just adding hours to an existing position have on your department? Like, you know, in, in the grand scheme, because I don't know what we're going to decide or weigh in on, but would, you know, it's a small, small enough ask, would it have a big impact? Yeah. So, so we were looking at starting off with, with one additional hour a day for that part-time person. Okay. So they work 17 and a half hours a week now, so it's just an additional five hours a week. During the, the huge increase in pistol permits, we did do that, and we, we just sucked up that cost because we had to. Right. And that one extra hour a day um, was, was a benefit. Us. We saw that. Could we use more? Yes. And the service study shows that we could use two. Yep. Uh, but I think that would have a significant impact on us. Okay. And it does. It's not adding hours there doesn't put them over a line for benefits or anything like that, right? Like, does it? Uh, it may. Okay. I don't. I don't know if that. If that does exactly. Okay, because that makes a difference, right, in the numbers. It does. Mm. So that's a question for you for you guys, <laughs> Amy and Tom. So. Sure. 
So what is the hour cut off from, you know, for benefits? Seventeen and a half or nineteen. And then you, you get a like prorated. <laughs> um we've been through a lot of slides. And I refuse to believe I'm the only person in this room who doesn't have clarity on the number of new full time equivalents. Sure. Please just say that. Three three sworn, three civilian is what service? But no, no, no. Yeah. Forget what the, 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 the study says. What we're asking for? Yes. Four and a quarter. Three sworn mm -hmm. and one. One civilian. And one half, and an increase in part. Five more hours. Okay. So three and one. <coughs> three and one. Time three and one point one. Okay. Yeah. So to answer the Thank question, you. you were the Could only you person. Could you speak to the school resource <laughs> officer? Was, um, I know it's been so successful at the high school. Um, we had one last year. Correct, we have two now? We have two. We've had two right for, for quite a while. We've had two. Uh, one is uh, designated for the high school, and one is designated as their home base is the middle school, and then they go to the elementary school. Right, yeah. So with a third, um, where really is the need in the district and schools? Yeah, so so the superintendent and I discussed this. This is our second year talking about it, and um, we both thought it would be on the plate uh, for this coming year, and the priorities have been adjusted, so, so it's not. You know, that was our original thought, is that we were gonna be looking for uh, a third SRO, and what would happen would be that uh, that SRO that is now currently at the middle school would that would be their basic prim primary responsibility, and the other one would bounce around among the five uh, elementary schools. Hmm. So that that's really not in the in the cards right now. Oh, I see it on here. It's not, it was not originally on there. there. Yeah. It is on here. Oh, so that's not in. No, that's not where we want to use that officer now. So again, in discussions with the superintendent, um, it's it's not it's not the priority right now for them. And you know, it's, it's a it's a joint venture. Okay, so that that line item under our service improvement should actually just be a sworn officer. Okay, thank no, you. I that helps. That is mm -hmm. confusing. Okay. I'm sorry, I don't, I don't see that. No, I don't. <laughs> We're all staring at the right Come on, Chief, it's page 269. You gotta. Gotcha. <laughs> three, one, three, one, three, one, three, one. Okay. The person here get all that is perfect. I'm impressed He's you kept up to this point. <laughs> okay, so I just want to clarify because that was incorrect. Um, yeah. Okay, so we have a line item that says a sworn officer. Traffic, 136, sorry. Um, and then we just changed the SRO to a sworn officer. Again, the same uh, salary. Yes. Then we have a line item, additional sergeant, 153. But you said that's a combination between yep. so one that, new officer and additional one being promoted. And the difference, yes, correct. So that's two in that line item. And then a police clerk, and then added hours for the current police clerk. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So those are things, if we start looking at them, Amy, we've only had like figures for the top service improvements. Like in the original, there was a 0 0.06 potential mill rate increase for the top Oh, right. so, so, yeah, so these would all be new ads that we're going to have to play with if we move things around. Hmm. Okay. Oh, are you done with police? Yep. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for more. The chief's like, let me get out of here. Oh, thank you. Oh. Nice job, Chief. Three and one point one. Yes. <laughs> we'll explain it to Chris again later. Don't worry. Okay. Three and one point one, not one and one. Right. Okay. Um, what do we want to do? We want to, you want to take a five-minute break? Or you want sure. To, sure. Yeah. Does anybody want a coffee break? So, are you guys okay with a, like a five? Ten. Ten-minute break so some of us could maybe get some caffeine. Is that good? And then next up we have um, Capital CNR and Debt Service. But, but the outside agency and stuff is going to be last. That, that's what this because we see those people are here. Some sense to accelerate that. Yeah, because yeah. they're here now. Yeah, but, right. She's in that. Well, the capital debt. We don't really have anything um, to present for those. It's kind of just 
slides to put up during your discussion. Yeah, so I think we should go to the right SBA is here, fire companies here, whoever else is here to to present. Um, all right, so let's take 10-ish and get coffee.